Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Kyrizo voltmeter, but it's a vacuum tube voltmeter. This model is called K1420 and do you guys remember the previous version that I already tested and had a look at? See, this one is called K142. So it's very, very much the same. And look at the scales side by side. They're identical, but the meter itself is a little bit bigger. The buttons, they are a lot better and much easier to read where we are, what we have selected. So all that is a lot better. Maybe a lot of users complained about this. See, even the previous owner here marked <laughs> with a permanent marker because it's this tiny little line. And when you're sitting here, you can't see where you are at. So that's a, a dumb design problem, completely wrong. And also this very special coax connection for DC input now they're using a BNC. Easy, easy. You can always get a mating connector for this. Also in 20 years and it's super easy. Other than that, it looks very much the same. The same zero and ohms and adjusting and AC balance and all that. Everything here is exactly the same as the other one. So I guess this video is going to be a lot shorter because you can see the other one for more details, I guess. I am a little bit worried about the ohms. Is there a battery inside? So, I think I should open this before I plug it in. Oh, yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to show. Look at the look at the mains cord. It's exactly the same. <laughs> the previous one and the new one. <laughs> this is just a funny, funny design. It's tiny, tiny. And we are inside this beautiful vacuum tube voltmeter. We see a fuse on the transformator. And I think this is after the mains switch. They improved, they improved a lot on this uh, main switch. So now we got the two input inputs and they go on each side of this switch so that means there's not this tiny little um, distance and it actually breaks of both of them and see now it is in off and if I oh, let's see if I can let's see if I can do that ah it's impossible to do that come on man so this is off and on and then stays on in all the different modes. And there's isn't really, see, this is all the way, and then back again. So, so this is a huge improvement. I don't see any problems with that. There's, uh, there's all the right distances. So, so that is definitely an improvement. And in general, everything here is really, really beautiful. And thank you very much, dear previous owner, for removing the battery correctly when you store your instruments for a long time, no use. Wow. If only everybody would do that. And every time I see batteries or not batteries or whatever, I just repeat this. So this is something you're going to re rehear <laughs> until you all know this a million times over. And there is a reason why I do that. Yeah. Ooh, that's a little bit of funny dust. But I think I need to go and find a battery and then we can power it up. Now it's fine. I feel, I feel happy to power this up. Yes, it will. Maybe stand on the tube. No, it will not. So I can easily put this flat here on the on the table. Yep. And it will be, see, fine and safe. 
to operate. Open. Cool. Oh, let's test this real quick. Power consumption is six watts. And the on off or power indicator here is a neon bulb. And it's super hard to see. You need to be at the right angle. And if you're just in a normal read position, you can't see anything at all. Sorry about all this uh, light. So this is the open. This is uh, a little bit confusing because you need to use two different adjustments for the ohms. So first you adjust for open and then you adjust for zero. So what I do is, here is a one ohm resistor, but first of course you connect to the other. Oh, damn, this is difficult to do with one hand. Of course, you just stick them together like this, right? So this is your zero. And then, ooh, this is real bad. Then you. Okay, and then we put it for zero. Fantastic. And then we open it. Ooh. And then we take the, the other knob. And dial four top one right and I think ooh, it's difficult and I think it's a good idea to do this back and forward a few times oh actually in second go it was just zero wow that was easy and then all we have to do is now connect our one ohm resistor and read out the ooh, yoy, yoy, times one yeah the thing can read one ohm. <laughs> and it looks like it can actually also read a little bit less than one ohm, right? So that's great. I think everything works. Uh, <clears throat> that was early, wasn't it? But at least one ohm work. That is the first. So I need to go through all the different ranges. And it is. this is a classical thing with the DC offsets uh, with, uh, with uh, tubes. So, uh, and the resistors here and stuff. So every time you change ranges, you see the offset and stuff. That is a little bit annoying, but that is just the way um, this type of, of um, device is used. And then you go back to zero and then adjust. And that's actually a little bit funny. And you need to turn the other way. See what I'm doing? If I go this way, and if I go that way. So that is a little bit, hmm. Anyway, I'll try some different uh, resistors and then I will get back. See, that is a little bit more than 1K. And I believe this is a 1K resistor. And if it's open, yep, that was right. And let's put it, oh man, is that impossible to do? And this is the zero, yep. So let's see what kind of resistor we have here. I'm sorry to say, but that resistor is actually a little bit under 1K. And yes, I am measuring on a four point with that one. So, yips. So that means that we need a little bit of a calibration here, but that shouldn't be that difficult. So measuring DC volts, it's quite easy. Just switch to DC positive and then you need a one mega ohm resistor in series with your signal. So I just did it this way just to make sure. And again, use the zero adjust for zero. And I am in the 15 volts range. And let's connect the signal. And this is 12 volts. So that must be the 15 volts range. I believe that is exactly 12 volts. Ha ha, mana mana, this is nice. And this is 30 volts input. I mean, I've been through all the different <laughs> ranges here. Uh, I've been playing with a lot of different voltages and stuff, but it's, it's just crazy how accurate it is. So they did something fantastic on this model it is really really crazy accurate 
let's just try and demonstrate this. So this is 10 volt. Let's go to, see, 10 volts. Let's uh, go to, I said, let's go to one. Okay, let's, try, let's take four. And then we go to the next level. See? very close to four and of course when you're changing ranges again you need to disconnect uh, the input and make the zero blah 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 and then it goes accurate okay, let's go back to one and we'll take the lowest mode so this is yeah exactly and that is even uncalibrated all right i haven't really thought about this oops it fell off this plus minus thing it is actually a thing of old old uh, voltmeters they have a uh, like a reverse input voltage uh, feature like a button or a switch or something like that and in all the new models of uh, voltmeters you don't have this because they are auto detect or they can read out positive and negative and stuff like that easily right so in the good old days you had to manually uh, switch between between this Let's try something funny. AC. And then we input AC volts. And we are now in the lowest range. So it's one and a half volts of AC input. And I got now one volt AC RMS input. And it reads a little bit too low. But now let's try and crank up the AC and see if it is... It was two. Okay, let's go to the five volt range. Doop, doop, doop. This is four volts RMS, and it's a little bit too low. Let me try and uh, go to the 15. Okay, now I'll crank it up to seven volts RMS. Five, six, seven. See, now it, it works. And this is, of course, there is a diode rectifier and stuff. And that is why you need, the more you input, um, your error gets lower and lower, right? So that's quite simple. So that is fantastic. It uh, kind of works. And it's fairly accurate. accurate so I am really um, happy about this. See what I did about the battery? <laughs> I just put in a, an AA cell and it's actually really, really stable in there. So that is a good solution for now yeah I, there isn't, isn't really anything i want to poke around with i see some trimmers for for trimming but i don't really know what they do so i'm only going to make it worse we could clean the contacts maybe but i think i'm just gonna pack it nicely back together because this is super the way it is